Hi, Diana. I'm good. Hi, Brittany. I'm sure you guys can hear the familiar clickety clickety of the mini mink. Hi, Jerry. Oh, wow, you guys jumped on fast. Hi, Stacy. Hi, Candace. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Elizabeth. Hi, Lori. Hi, Crystal. Hi, Connie. Hi, Kythera. Hi, Gloria. Hi, Francis. Hi, Deb. Hey, Karen. Hi, Sandy. Wow. Look at all my ladies. I'm sure the fellas are there. They're just hiding in the background. Okay, Thera's getting her swap cards done. Great. Hello, Judy. Hi, Melissa. Hi, Jan. Hey, Chow. Hi, Cheryl. Hey, my assistant abandoned me. Jane says, Crafty Critta, my new faves. Yay! Hello, Carol. Hi, Truly Blessed. Hi, Cheryl. Hi, Jean. Louise. Debadoo! Anita. Hi, Jean. Gloria. Karen. Connie. Karen. Just watching a lawyer talk about how Bill and Melinda didn't have a prenup. Who's Bill and Melinda? Am I supposed to know who these people are? Who's Bill and Melinda? Oh, Gates. Oh. Does that mean I can't be his girlfriend now? He ain't got no money? Oh. Hey, Bill, call me. <laughs> well, that lady gonna get rich. You know what? On the other hand, Melinda... Let's trend forward here. Girl, you call me. <laughs> Gloria says me first. <laughs> Clearly, Nancy does not watch the news. I said the same thing. You go, girl. Hi, Don. Oh, I have a box here from, this just arrived today. Oh. Miss Stephanie sent me a box full of more stuff to go in the giveaway pile. So that means more giveaways, you guys. So thank you, Stephanie. Well, Cheryl, yeah, Tim McGraw, that's just, you know, I'm just his side piece. You know, Faith can be his wife. I'll just on the side for fun, you know. He sings the songs to me in private. <laughs> Hi, Crystal. Hi, Bunny. Gloria, you sent me a package too? Oh, boy. I feel special. Clearly worn by... <laughs> Oh, Connie, I'm glad you got them. Good. I do have packages I need to mail out. Gay, um, I have your package to mail out. I have another one on my desk. Chardin, or S. Harden, I should say, just claimed her prize from Crafty Critta. You, someone was going to get picked again, um, but we found her. So that's all settled. So you never know. You never know. Oh, Jean, come on. 
It's always without the hat. Actually, you know what Tim, and, Tim McGraw and I actually do? We go fishing together. <laughs> Hi, Vivian. All right. So I'm going to show you guys some things, and then we will get to foiling. I'm going to move these beauties out of the way just for a second here. We're going to talk about a couple of... Ooh, oh, you didn't see those. Let's hide those. I got some happy mails here. Oh, I guess I should make sure I'm not showing anybody's address, including my own. Okay, I got this lovely, lovely shaker card from Carla. Look at it. It's got hearts. It's got glitter. I always admire when you guys put the time into shaker cards because I don't have the patience for that. I mean, I very, very rarely make shaker cards because I just don't have the time. But that is beautiful ombre paper. The thanks is uh, foiled. And then we have, our, we have our glitter in there. So very pretty. And then I have this one from Meta. Meta sent me two cards, actually. So look, oh my God, Meta, I just can't take art classes from you. Meta should really teach card making classes. Meta, if you're not on any design teams, we need to get you on some because your cards are just so magnificent. Magnificent. When we get Meta's cards, like she's just in a way different league from me. <laughs> so here it's almost like it's a, a Coco Chanel perfume bottle. And then it has these large peonies coming out that she watercolored and glittered. And then popped it all up, embossed paper, ribbon. I mean, just gorgeous. And it's just a, a Happy Mother's Day card. It's a white bottle. It says acetone. It's the same bottle. You can't find it? Okay. This is the other card Meta sent me, and it's hot foiled. This is that new Spellbinders Stars background. This is the Spellbinders Hello. If you're interested, please use my Spellbinders link. You're going to see a lot more projects coming from me and Spellbinders. Um, they just sent me some more goodies, so I'm super excited to get this opportunity to work with them. But... Um, the only, note, the only thing I will get from them, you guys, other than product, is my affiliate link. So whatever you guys purchase, please use the Spellbinders link or scrapbook.com if you can find it on scrapbook.com. So Meta did that. And she always decorates the envelopes beautifully, too. Yes, look at Chow. She's on top of it. And then this one is from Kren. Oh, my gosh. Look at the cute fish. Fishing is not a sport. It's an attitude. And it's a little tent pop-up card. Isn't that so adorable? Love it. I was hoping to do that this weekend, but it's supposed to rain all weekend, so I don't think I'll be doing any fishing. How did she cut the curve on that card? I think it's a die. Yeah, it looks like a stitched die, so we'll have to find out from Meta which die it is. Yep. Okay. And I have some paper from Linda, who is all the way out in the UK, and Linda sent me some white paper that she thinks is comparable to Hamilco paper. It's It feels like hammer mill paper to me. It feels almost exactly like hammer mill paper um, that she would like me to try out for foiling from our UK friends. And she made this beautiful card. And she said this design was in our group. So I guess after we did the redo of the designs, because we didn't want to copyright any designs, it got taken down. But if you were one of the lucky ones to download this, she did this with... Um, Rainbow foil from, I think she said Crafty Critta. I think she did say Crafty Critta somewhere in here. I can't, I can't see it right now. But um, yeah, so this is, I think, black hot foil, or black foiled. Hello from across the font is black and then rainbow foil on this paper. So I will be testing this paper out and I will let you UK folks know it's called lime limetreecraft.com silky smooth ultra white decoupage printing paper and this is 200 GSM. She sent me quite a few sheets to 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 foil with. So I haven't printed them yet, but I will try that out for our UK folks. 
um, in the future. Love that design. Hello. Hello. Hello, love it. All right. So I wanted to talk to you guys real basic about some um, foiling. I'm going to say, I don't want to say basic questions, but once you get into more advanced foiling, some issues that you guys are having with foiling. Uh, so I want to talk to talk about that. We'll talk about these in a moment. <laughs> Sneak peek. Um, so... If you are not aware, for those of you that have now purchased a laser printer, again, we talked about this pre-COVID. Um, laser printers are around a black and white mono laser printer. You want it to be 600 DPI or higher. You would It would be idea if it has a, a feed where it goes straight through. And what I mean by that is when it prints, instead of it rolling up and coming back out the top, if it has like a back door, so as it feeds the paper in, it goes in the back. And a manual feed is nice because then you can do thicker cardstock. Now, ideally, if you are in the U.S., 80-pound Hamilco uh, semi-gloss paper is the best we found for foiling. Um it also depends on, obviously, the paper, the type of printer, um, the foil you're, you're using, and uh, toner. Sometimes generic toners uh, work. Sometimes they don't work. I can't answer everything for you. I will answer as much as I can test out. But obviously, I'm not going to go and buy 10 different laser printers to test them all out. I'm not going to buy 10 different laminators to test them all out. So I can only use what I have to test out. So my best advice is use what you have and then figure out what's going to work within your budget. But I would say we have several recommendations in the group for a Canon printer, a brother printer. And like I said, if you can find them at your local office supply store, it's around $125 US. I don't think you need a big hunking $300 color laser printer. And I know it's going to vary based on the country you're in. So obviously in Canada and UK, um, Australia, it's going to be different. And all I can do is work with what I have available for me in the US. So for those of you that are in other countries that want to give advice to people in other countries, certainly we do recommend that. For those of you that are in the U.S., we do ask that you kind of just ask ahead of time because everybody just kind of throws their two cents out there and we're like, whoa, 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 we didn't try that out. An $80 printer from Walmart is may not be as good as a $125 printer that you can get from Staples. So that's all that, you know, but in the UK and Australia and Canada, we just kind of have to go on the word of those folks because they don't have as much of a selection as we have. Um, I'm so glad you got it, Lisa. Yay! Lisa, did you get my package? Lisa, I sent you a package too. Anyway, I digress. So, if you have a laser printer, these are some new designs that are... Oh, Lisa, I sent you quite a few. Um, these are from Kitchen Sink Stamps. These are the new designs. They have three new printable design sets that went up. Um, extended plaids, which are four more plaids that you can print slimline, so they're not just square. Um, geometrics and bold print. So I wanted to show them to you, but you'll notice that, look at my printing. Look at, it's all yucky, okay? And you guys know I generally get pretty good printing, and this is Hamilco paper, so I was not happy to see this quality of printing come out of my printer, but then I remembered... Oh yeah, I have been printing and foiling a lot of stuff in the last couple of days. I probably should clean my printer. So what I wanted to show you guys is when your printer starts to do weird things like this, um, one of the things that you can do is if your machine has a cleaning function, you want to go through the settings and clean it. My machine does not. My machine says that I physically have to pull the drum out and there's a little slide and I just slide. It's got little bristles on it like a toothbrush and I just um, slide it back and forth to clean the drum. And the other thing I wanted to show you guys, and I'm just going to show you these designs. I'm really not going to waste any foil on these because they're going to foil terribly. I guess I could use the back side of the paper, um, but you can see they're really cool 
looking to get designs. And again, you can pick these up at Kitchen Sink Stamps. I believe it's $4.95. You get four designs. You can print as many as you want, or you can download the design onto a USB, take it to your local print shop and ask them to print it for you, or um, print it from work you know nobody's looking but when your printers look that way you can purchase these are in my amazon shop these are called cleaning sheets and all it is is it's basically a microfiber piece of paper so this is a microfiber finely woven paper and it's all you do is print on this you print on this you turn it over and you print again and it will clean clean your printer up from what's going on here. So I think this has 10, 10 sheets in here. I believe it's under $20. This will last you quite a while and this will work in laser and inkjet printers. So if your printer is starting to do this on you and you're like, what are these weird things going on? Uh, time to clean the printer. So try that out. So paper matters, toner matters, also, what's going to matter is, for me, um, the type of software I open it up in. So if I open something up in just Adobe and try to print it, I don't get the settings I need to accurately print the best quality. So I always like to open up for my Silhouette software. If you have like Photoshop or something like that, some kind of upgraded software where you can go in and, pr and mess with the quality, the DPI, the print quality, those things are gonna matter. I did do a video on my printer on how to set up the best print quality where you have toner fix fixation and you can set the DPI and all those things. That's a different video. You'll wanna go watch that video, but I wanted to give you guys a heads up on these cleaning sheets. Definitely recommend getting them if you're gonna start jumping into this. We need to take care of our tools. One of those tools is our laser printers, right? Okay, hope that makes sense. I got a package from UPS. Yep, Karen knew it. Time to increase the size on your print. Da, da, da. Yeah, so the other advantage to printing from an actual printer software is you can change the size, you can change the orientation, those things too. So glad that Stacy brought that up. So I also wanted to demonstrate to you guys that you can print on acetate. Now I am using this is called Apollo Laser Printer Transparency Film. Again, people like to post in the FSC group that they just put any random willy-nilly thing that they print on, and you're going to find out that they are not laser compatible or they're not foil compatible because once you put this plastic into a mink, you're exposing it to heat twice, once it goes through the laser and twice through the mink. And if it's inkjet, one, it may not accept your ink and hold on to it, or two, it's going to melt. So please, when I make these recommendations, you guys, it's because I've tried it and um, it works. Again, I know this is for U.S. people, but keep that in mind. This is 50 sheets in here. It's going to last you a long, long time. Um, this one says non-striped, so it's completely clear. And I've printed two of the new designs on here, the Paisley because my friend Stacy loves the Paisleys. So let me show you what they look like. This is out of the bold design. So this is one of them. It's kind of like a, a mandala kind of look here, right? Very pretty. And then this one is the Paisleys. So we will foil these guys. Okay. And the other one I printed on photo paper. This is just regular photo paper, okay? So there is a difference between photo paper and glossy paper. I'm not gonna get into the differences of those, but don't confuse the two. Photo paper and glossy paper are two different things. Photo paper is actually printed on plastic usually. It has special um, chemicals in there to keep your colors vibrant and bright so that they last longer versus being actual paper. So just keep that in mind. There is a difference between the two. So we're gonna, we're gonna foil these guys. Once they're laser printed S hard and no, they do not smudge. So laser printing is a plastic that goes down, it gets heated up, it melts. Think of when you do heat embossing. So when it's laser printed, it is baked on there. It's not going to come off, 
okay? And again, it just depends on your printer, your settings. Um, I do wanna try to be careful because the transparencies attract a lot of static. So they're gonna need some dusty dusty going on. All right, so let's get to the heart of the matter here. Why am I making this video? Well, a few months back, I made a video on Hi, Jen. I made a video on clear foils, and we used a variety of the Crafty Critic toner foils, and um, we did, I don't know if I played with the hot foils, but Blue Bonnet has hot foils. Now, if you don't know the difference between hot foils and toner foils, I will show you some of the difference today, but there is a different video you want to watch that's the difference between hot foil and toner foils. Not all foils are created equal. It is the exact same when it comes to these clear foils. The hot foils are really different than the clear foils. And I'm going to go through and show you some of the differences. And this is kind of a three-part video. Part one was I wanted to show you guys some of the new kitchen sink stumps. Part two was I wanted to demonstrate how you could use the clear foils. Part three was I wanted to show you what kinds of things you could print and foil on because I get a lot of questions just like the glossy paper, just like the acetate. Black paper is the number one question we get. I understand Craft Essentials is sold out, so the next best paper I can recommend is the Black Hamilco. All of these items are in my Amazon shop. Um, that's the next best thing that I can recommend. But I wanted to show you, I did a little homework here ahead of time, some pre-work. I learned from Stacy's Scan and Cut video that I can um, make my own decals, basically, right? So Elizabeth made us this wonderful logo last year when we started um, the Foiling Snobs Club. And so what I did was I printed out sheets of these on my printer, and then I used my scan and cut, and I cut circles out of them, okay? And I have used a variety of different products here. Some of these are stickers, some of them are not stickers, but they will be turned into stickers. And I wanted to foil them on camera with you guys so that you could see what the difference was in each product, all right? So just how many things that I cut out is the question. And let's not, that's a sticker paper. I don't wanna mix these up too badly here. And if you hear the clicking, that is little baby mink over there warming up. And some of these I'm going to recommend definitely would foil them again. And some of them I'm going to say don't waste your time. Okay, and really the only ones I did not do was black paper. And the reason I did not do black paper is because that's already been done. You can go watch my video on black paper. So I really didn't want to repeat stuff that I have already Done. Okay, I think that I have these pretty well sorted now. Okay, so I'm going to start with the real obvious ones that I think everybody's going to ask me, which is colored paper, right? So let me explain the science behind colored paper. So paper comes from trees. Trees are an organic material. When we cut the tree down and it goes through processing, through the mill, what do they do? They basically shred the tree into pulp as finely as they can and then cook the tree, basically boil it down um, until it is a pulp and then they strain the pulp and make it into paper. Now, 
the highest quality, super smooth paper goes through this process several times and then that paper gets bleached out until it turns white. Um, so it doesn't look like a tree anymore. It turns into white paper, right? So white paper has no pigment in it. It is bleached out of it. When it is bleached out, then you have this super smooth white paper, right? So depending on how many times it's been through um, the, the manufacturing process will determine how smooth that paper is. And then you'll have, obviously, with many manufacturers, they're going to then add color, which would be dye, or they are going to add enhancements to the paper. Uh, for example, like glossy paper, where they're going to basically put plastic on top of that paper, right? So white paper then has a sheen or gloss to it, but essentially it's it's paper with no color to it, right? They don't add white to the paper. They, they just bleach the paper to turn white. The smoother the paper, the better it's going to foil. That is my rule, which is why we love Hamilco paper. Have yet to find a paper that comes um, as good as Hamilco paper, okay? So when you think about black paper, that is the opposite process. So any colored papers, they're now injecting a dye into that paper. So because they are injecting a dye, so here we have red paper, blue paper, and pink paper. So because they are injecting a dye into the paper, what do they want this paper to be? Oh, congratulations, Deb. Yay! They, they want the paper to be colored and they want the paper to be porous because the more porous the paper is, the more it's going to accept the dye, right? So, um, you know, ladies, I, I'm going to have to give you my home analogy here. I now have accepted the fact that I need to color my gray hairs every uh, six to eight weeks, okay? I am half Asian, so my hair is very thick. Um, and it's very difficult for me to get those grays to accept color, okay? And that's because gray hairs, for whatever reason, are super thick and super resistant to accepting dye. They don't want it, okay? So if my hair would be a little thinner, it probably would accept the dye a little better, right? If it were chunky, if it had like more, if it weren't so tight and thick, if it had a little bit of room to it, it would accept the dye. It's the same kind of thing. Um, <laughs> Jen says I would have studied. So it's the same thing. So generally these colored papers, although they feel smooth and they look smooth, they're not as smooth as Hamilco because they have to have a, a grit to them for the dye to stick to. Does that make sense? Oh, Asian hair chefs are shaped differently. Okay. <laughs> now we're getting into hair dye. So Although I love colored paper, and I would love to say I found a colored paper that's going to be 100%, I have yet to find 100%. Even the black paper, something that's got that little coating on it like Hamilco does. So if you would insist on having colored paper, I would actually recommend that you print on Hamilco and foil on Hamilco and then color the Hamilco because um, using the papers will come close, but it's not, I have yet to find an ultra smooth paper. And I'll show you all of the samples that I've done here. Let it go gray, it's trendy. No, I'm not doing that. Um, so this pink paper is from Recollections. I'll show you the package. I tried to bring the packaging out for everything. So this was just in my stash. You can get this from Michael's. You know, they come in five different colors. It's 65 pound and it feels super smooth. This one happens to be the neon pack, so it's really fun, right? Well, I foiled it with some regular foil and to the naked eye, hey, that looks really good, Nancy. What are you complaining about? Well, I want you guys to just look a little closer. And now you can see this is not 100% foiled, right? So for my personal opinion, this is not FSC approved, okay? If I'm going to do foiling, it really needs to look good. By the way, yes, 
it was mentioned to me that somebody brought up the fact that I don't like deco foil and I prefer the mink over the laminator. Potato, what is it? Tomato, tomato, okay? Again, I will reiterate that I'm not selling a product. She is. So I'm going to always give you guys the truth. So again, looks good from here. Hey, if I'm trying to sell you something, I'm going to say it looks great. But you guys wouldn't watch me if I wasn't honest and I give you the truth. So you can see all the black spots, right? Okay. Now, I will say, of course, I tried it out with the clear foils. This is the hot foil and the crafty crita foil. The crafty crita foil looks amazing on it. You cannot tell that there's any miss spots on there. It's holographic. That looks super rad. So if you are okay with the black coming through and you wanted to do the clear foil, crafty crita is toner foil. So that toner foil sticks to anything toner printed and it looks great. Now the clear foil, hot foil, excuse me, I don't want to mix this up. The hot foil I got from Blue Bonnet, let me focus here. It looks okay, but you guys can see it's not 100%. It's, 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 it's kind of missed, right? See, the holographic part looks cool, but it's not 100%. So if you're going to foil on colored paper, if you insist on doing it, the Crafty Krita Clear Foil, and by the way, they're coming out with three new clear foil patterns is what I've heard, um, come out great. That looks cool. Just enough of a little, hey, what's that little shimmer bling in there? Okay, so that was the recollections paper. Let me show you. This is the Astro Brights. Now, Astro Brights is pretty much everywhere, right? Astro Brights is, an, I think it's a Nina company, aren't they? For some reason, I thought Astro Brights was owned by Nina. I could be wrong. I don't know. But again, uh, you can find this paper at Target. You can find this at Office Max. You can find this paper everywhere, right? So this is a double-sided paper pack. This is 70 pounds, and it's got one color on one side and a different color on the other side. So I thought it was cool to print it out. And again, from here... Foiling looks really cool, Nance. That looks great. But if you go to the truth camera, it tells you here, eh, it's like 95%, you guys, right? And I don't think I did any of the clear foils on here because I just figured it would be the same. And then I did it in blue with the Crafty Crita foil. Here it is again. Focus, focus. Does it want to focus? Come on, come on. There we go. And as we bring it closer, you can see all the miss spots. Okay. But again, with the Crafty Critic Clear Foil, sticks to everything. And you it just looks cool. Look at that. It's it's harder to tell if there are any miss spots because the like being clear, all you see is the black and the holographic part of the foil. I used the scan and cut, Lisa. Yeah, Stacy did a video showing how to cut your shapes out. So I used my scan and cut to cut the shapes out. So that was Astro Brights. Still good, but again, not 100%. All right. I stayed up till like 3 o'clock in the morning doing this the other night, messing around. Um, and I'm exhausted because I was very, I've been very busy at work. Really busy, which I'm not complaining. I'm kind of really irritated that there are some people that could be getting jobs right now. I have personal friends that are sitting on their butts collecting unemployment when they should be getting a job. But neither here nor there for this video. All right, so then I started playing around with some other kind of things. And I want to show you guys this. You know, I'm going to save this one for last. We'll save that one for last. Okay, so here is some silver card. Now, Miss Stacy, you guys got to give her a high five. Stacy sent me all of this colored cardstock. She sent me um, literally 
all of this, okay? So she sent me rose gold, silver, um, glitter, pearl paper, and I believe most of these are in my Amazon shop. These are part of the uh, Sizzix paper packs that you guys bought. Um, so there's a variety of different types. So you get like five different types. So this is the pearlescent cardstock. Here's the mirror cardstock. Here's the brush cardstock. Here's the satin finish cardstock. And then here it is again in silver. Um, so this comes in rose gold, gold, silver, gray, and then holographic iridescent, I think it's called. She'll, she'll, it's in the Amazon shop. But anyway... I basically just took one of each of these and said, okay, let's print and see how this looks. Okay, so I'm just going to move this whole pile out of the way here. So this is the satin silver. And you can see, okay, it prints okay. I mean, I'm not saying any of these look bad. They just look better when we foil them. So when I foiled them, now here's where things get interesting. All right, now I will say this kind of threw me off. <laughs> because this is brushed silver, I use sil uh, purple holographic foil on this. When I did the purple holographic foil, it's so bright that the background to me didn't look silver anymore. It looked white, but it actually is the brushed silver. It's okay. It's not terrible. It's definitely more coverage than the colored paper. Never mind down here. I did not do full job at Dusty Dusty. I was just slapping on foil and seeing how it did. So regular foil printed on it works fine. Here's the holographic crafty crit of foil. So this again, toner foil. Looks pretty cool when that light hits it. There we go. Okay. Now, the hot foil likes a surface to stick to. Hot foil, again, the more slick the surface is, the better the foil adheres. So the hot foil from Blue Bonnet sticks to the whole thing. Look at how cool that looks. So you have to try what you have. I'm not saying you need to go out and buy all new papers. I'm saying you probably already have these in your stash. We all have a secret drawer of do not touch my pretty papers. You guys need to get some of those papers out, okay? Because the hot foil from Blue Bonnet and the Crafty Crita foil will stick to them. Okay, now the Crafty Crita foil only sticks to where it's toner printed. It doesn't stick to any of the open areas, okay? Where the hot foil sticks to the whole thing. Can you guys see that? Now, someone's going to say, which do you prefer? It depends on what you're making. It's like dye inks and pigment inks. I like both of them. It just depends on what I'm making. In some instances, this looks better than this. And in some instances, this looks better than this. All right, so that's the satin silver. And again, this is what it looks like when you first print it out. Okay, it looks cool, nothing special. Let's put some jewelry on her and take this baby out. Bam. Okay. All right, so that's the satin silver. Then I did the pearlescent rose gold. Now, pearlescent rose gold is very pretty on its own. Foiling scares you, Tina. You are in a safe place, Tina. There's not a foiling mistake that you can make that I have not already made a hundred times. Okay, so this is the pearlescent rose gold paper. Very pretty on its own. Can you see that shimmer? Okay, so again, I ran it through my laser printer and that looks great. Hey, if I wanted to send this to you guys and make it into a sticker, I'm sure everybody would love it. But then I said, nah, I gotta bling it up. Here's what happened with this one. Here's that same regular foil. Look at what it did. It overfoiled. This is toner foil. I did not use hot foil, but clearly whatever they used in the manufacturing of this paper to make it pearlescent, it's caused my foil to stick to it. So in this case, the regular foil, yucky. It doesn't, that's not good. That's not FSC quality, right? 
So I said, okay, let me try the Crafty Krita hot foil. That came out fabulously because it only stuck to the toner. Look at. Pretty. Okay. And then I said, well, let me do the blue bonnet hot foil. And it came out okay. But here's where the toner Crafty Krita one again is look. Can you guys see that missed spot there? There you can see it. So here, the foil didn't want to stick to the whole thing. And so there's a crease. There's actually some missed spots on the whole thing. So it would have been cool if it stuck to the whole thing. And I noticed that this hot foil likes uh, glossy surfaces. If you try to stick it on porous, regular matte paper surfaces, it doesn't like to stick. So the, the, the glossier the surface, the better this blue bonnet hot foil works okay yeah it's not just a wrinkle it just is it 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 doesn't go through the process the same way okay by the way i use my mink machine on four for all of these three or four for all of them so you're gonna have to do experiments with your because these are all thicker cards i mean these are like 80 pound cards so they're thicker Okay, now we started to get a little bolder here with our experiments. Don't worry, Nancy's got boo-boos to show you. All right, this is, remember Nancy went online and bought that holographic paper from the Etsy seller and paid way too much for shipping? Yeah, that paper. All right, so here is the regular silver holographic paper. Well, that paper does not like to go through the laser printer. Oh my gosh, you guys. Hold horses. Hold the horses. Who's shopping right now? Chow. We have a 20% off discount code for Crafty Krita for the next seven days on all foil and foil art. The code is Clear Foil Rocks. Clear Foil Rocks. Oh my gosh, Crafty Critter, they love us. Clear Foil Rocks. I just put it in there. 20% off all foil and foil art for the next seven days. What? 20%? Go get your clear foils. And like I said, they have new ones. I'll show you those in a second. All right. So as I was saying, this clear, the clear holographic foil immediately went through the laser printer and it altered. So it's not super smooth. It almost got like, once the heat touched it, it's going to be hard for you guys to see, but the, the surface of it kind of went satin finish. So we lost the super shininess and it went to a satin finish because of the heat from the laser printer. So then I took it to the next level and I said, well, let me foil it. Well, foiling it really kind of, uh, I don't know how to explain it. It The foil is on there, but the texture, there's this weird, I don't know how to explain it like a skin on the top. That's the best way I can explain it, is the, the heat from the laser printer and the mink caused this kind of dull skin on the top of this holographic paper. So I, I know that it's cool to have the holographic paper for the other artsy things that we're doing. Uh, I don't know that I would foil on it. Um, so here it is with the Crafty Crit. Of course, this looks amazing. But it still has, a, it's not going to be super shiny. So if you're going to, yes, that's the best word, Deborah. is it's a little hazy looking. So it still looks cool, but it goes from super shiny, glossy holographic paper to a satin finish. So here it is with the Crafty Krita again. The camera's having a hard time focusing on it. Too much, too much glittery. There we go. And then I did the hot foil on it. Now the hot foil did adhere to the whole thing. But again, it is kind of hazy looking. So if you bought this paper, this is from the Etsy seller. I didn't try the Sizzix. Yeah, this is the Etsy guy. I, d I don't know that I would foil on this paper. I'd probably save this for embossing folders and mats and stamping on, but not foiling. 
Okay, so that's the holographic silver. I also bought from him this holographic white. Now the holographic white came out different. So here's the holographic white, which is really pretty. You see the lines of rainbow in there. That looks cool. Hi, Ken. So here it is with the Crafty Critifoil. That looks cool. I don't know, it's just very spacey, right? Holographic, only stuck to the toner side. Actually, did it stick to everything here? No, I think that's an optical illusion. And then regular foil stuck to it fine. Never mind there, I may have a dirty toner sheet. I mean, a folder. I was basically using scraps of foil. So regular foil looks great. That's that purple holographic. And the hot foil stuck to it fine. So the white, if you bought white holographic from the Etsy seller, that, for whatever reason, went through the machines fine. That is so cool when that light hits that. Do not adjust your monitors. So on the white, looks amazing, looks great. All right, I know some of you guys are gonna ask about stickers, so we're gonna get into stickers in a second, and I am going, I promise I am going to foil some things tonight. Hello, Scott, I just shared your wonderful generosity coupon code. Everybody, Scott is the Australian owner of Crafty Critta. Thank you so much for sharing your goodness. Uh, so this is LD sticker paper. Our wonderful Chow sent me some of this. Um, and also Bill, our group member Bill. And Bill found, um, Bill did a lot of experiments with the Blue Bonnet uh, Clear. He was making like, um, he was making like Disney cards. Like he sent a couple to Leah. I don't have those in front of me, but Bill did the heat and bond experiment. But here it is on sticker paper. So regular sticker paper. Hey, I want to make a sticker and stick it on something. Cool. I can definitely foil that. So again, there's the purple holographic foil. Foil's fine. Nancy could have did a better job with Dusty Dusty, but it foils fine. Here is that wonderful holographic foil from Crafty Critta. It's right now, you guys get 20% off. And they have some new designs. And I don't think I hot foiled those. So we'll try to hot foil one of those. And then the last one I'm saving, best for last. It's our tried and true Hamilco. Okay, so... Obviously, regular foil looks amazing on it. Okay. Then I did the Crafty Crita foil on it. It looks amazing on it. The camera, there we go. So weird because I have to move it for you guys to see the quality of the foil. It just really pops. Just imagine sending somebody this. They're gonna they're gonna like look at it and, and like try to figure out how'd you do that, right? What it's like lenticular when you have those little photographs that kind of change. That's what that is. And then here is the hot foil on it. So Hamilco wins again. And how many of you guys already have this? I know you guys do. If you don't, it's in my Amazon shop. So Hamilco. Hands down, wins again. And for those of you that want colored cardstock, this is how you get it. So let's talk about colored cardstock. Let me pull one of these guys out. Is that the right one? Nope, that's the sticker paper. I don't want to mix. I mixed up the sticker papers. The sticker papers are thinner. They're not as hardy as the Hamilco. And I do have more to show you. So how do you get this into a colored thing? Oh, I don't know. You grab your favorite inks. Maybe you just happen to have a sneak peek of some new inks that you want to share with your friends. These will be in the shop at May 12th.
And of course, we want to thank our friends over at CP for sharing these little goodies. So these will be available May 12th. I will. I do have a CP link or a scrapbook.com link, um, but they are truly beautiful colors. I think this really rounds out some of the holes that she has in the colors. So Jerry says, I must resist buying new inks. <laughs> No fun flaunting what we can't have yet. Well, I'm just giving you a sneak peek. Sneak peek. But what I want to do is I really want to take one of these uh, darker colors. So I'm going to take this cove blue. So Nancy really would like to have a dark blue cardstock to foil. So this is all we do. Ooh, that's very dark and very juicy. It's this easy, you guys. The Hamilco paper takes blending beautifully. You don't have to worry about it. So if I want blue paper and I want to foil on it, this is the best way to do it because I really want my foiling to be the star. I don't really want the colored paper to be the star, right? I want the foiling to be the star. And if the color paper costs you very, um, you know, a lot of money, it's very expensive to buy a certain kind of color paper, especially right now. It's wedding season. It's graduation season. And you're going out and spending money on buying expensive paper, and then you're sending me emails on why it doesn't foil. The first thing I'm going to tell you is it's probably too porous because it has all those fancy colors in it. And it's probably textured because we all want to buy fancy textured paper. And then you try to foil it, and your foil really doesn't adhere, and it doesn't look so good. So use the Hamilco, you guys. It really is the, the be-all for foiling. So we're going to let that dry a second, and then we'll foil that. The code is Clear Foil Rocks, right? Clear Foil Rocks. Excuse me, you guys. I need a drink. I am dying of thirst here. Hold on. My little mini Dr. Pepper. Clear Foil Rocks gets you 20% off at Crafty Critta. And Crafty Critta has toner foil, and toner foil will stick to anything you print on. Okay? Here's the other cool things about these. These are the sheets that I used. You guys, you know why they're not in the trash? Because you can use them more than once. What? the only foil that I know of on the market that you can use multiple times to foil. Not kidding. It's true. I'll prove it to you. So if you've never ordered from Crafty Critta, they're amazing. Um, they are a company, a family owned company in Australia. Um, I found them a year ago, a year ago, they found me, I should say, and said, would you like to try our foils and our foil art? And I was like, sure, okay. Not really thinking too much of it. And now it's like anybody who's looking for foil or foil art or storage, you got to go check them out. And yes, I know they're in Australia, but you guys, they just gave you guys 20% off foil and foil art. Take advantage of it. They do accept PayPal. They ship very quickly. And when you convert from Australian dollars to US dollars, it usually comes out cheaper. Why do I love them? First of all, customer service is always number one to me. In a world where robots answer the phone and you can't get anywhere and you get the runaround and you get people pointing the finger, this is a company that they care about their customers all over the world. So customer service, number one, top priority, amazing. Okay, so this is um, a small sampling of their lineup. I think they have over 45 different colors and types of foil. So if you are looking for something, they have it. 
look at the embeds in here. We have red glitter, we have gold glitter, we have sparkle gold. These, um, I'm gonna show you my top picks. If you wanna order something you can't find anywhere else, these, get your pen and paper. These have to go on your list. Mother's Day is Sunday. That means that you guys all get a free pass to get what you want. I say so. Um, hold on, hold on. A lot of these foils you can find similar, but they have a handful that I have not seen from anyone else or close to anyone else. And you guys need, need, need to get them. All right, so Nancy's top recommendations are obviously the clear foils. I have three of the clear foils here. Um, the one that I used in all of my samples was called 3D Clear. So there you can see the lines, the hexagon lines. Okay. The other one is called Hologram Brittle. This kind of goes with everything. I don't think you can go wrong with this one because it just puts all kinds of wonderful, beautiful colored facets on everything. And then the last one is called Clear Hologram Hexagon, which is more of a 3D special mirrored fun house look. It's kind of hard to pick it up on camera, but it's very cool looking. Okay, so those are the three clears and I understand they just added some new clear foils. I don't have those yet. And then these are the ones that Nancy loves and I have not seen anybody that ever has these other than Crafty Krita. I could be wrong, but I have not found them anywhere else. The first one is Sparkle Bronze. I cannot explain this color and do it justice. It's not like a rose gold. It is Sparkle Bronze and it has rainbow holographic glitter. I mean, oh. I just I just think of um, Marilyn Monroe and that pink dress and, you know, all of the sparkle and glitz and jewelry. Like, that's what this foil reminds me of. It's just high elegance luxury. It's just so pretty. So that's called Sparkle Bronze. Cannot find this one anywhere else. Have not seen it anywhere. And then these are a cool design, again, that I have not seen anywhere else. So... The first one is called Poolside Blue. It almost looks like waves or alligator skin. This one's one of our tops. Rainforest Green, it's the perfect shade of green. It's not too light, it's not too dark, it's right in the middle. Is that you, Leo? My little doggy came to visit me. Baked Sand is a golden orange yellow. And it looks like it's textured or 3D. It's not, you guys. It's nice, shiny, fun, wonderful glitter. And then the red one is called Lava Flow. Doesn't that look like there's like beams of light going through there? That's just how the foil works. It's just super cool. So Lava Flow, Bake Sand, Rainforest, Poolside Blue, Sparkle Bronze. Of course, all the clear foils. I mean, you guys are ordering it from Australia. Get what you want. Mother's Day Sunday. I give you permission. Splurge on yourself. You get a 20% off coupon. And if you didn't check out all of their amazing new foil art, they have slimline foil art now. Don't forget to add to your pile the toner sheets. They have really good quality toner sheets. When you order the foils, they send you the blank cards so you can swatch them out. So that's what I did. I swatched out all of the foils. And like I said, I have 45 of their foils. And we're going to play around some more with the clear foils here. Hi, bevies. Um, Candace is asking what size do we get. So Candace, they go by millimeters, I think right? Yes. So 320 millimeter or 160 millimeter. 
Um, let me measure this out and tell you what this is because I don't think it says on here. Okay, so this one would be 160 millimeters, which is 16 centimeters. So if you're going to do a, do you want a half roll or a full size roll? That's basically what it's saying. So the half rolls are going to be 160 millimeters. The 320 millimeters are going to be a full size roll. So if you guys are doing Big Mama Mink, you're doing scrapbook pages, you may want to go with the larger foil. Um, if you're card makers, you're limited on space, you may want to go with 160 millimeters, which they, they cut the rolls in half. They customize, they can cut the rolls to whatever size you want, um, which they reminded me of that. I totally forgot that they did that. I know some of you like the big rolls. Some of you like the smaller rolls. Whatever you want to order, that's up to you. Yeah, like Bernie says, you know, you just realize you're leaving the best stuff in the dark on the shelf collecting dust. WTF, flaunt that stuff. It's like wearing your favorite pair of diamond earrings every day. Nobody said you weren't allowed to do that, okay? Do it. Do it. Do it. All right, now I know you guys are saying, shut up, Nancy. Let's see you foil. I'm going to move this stuff over here. I just had this gold paper here because this was the, um, this is that craft card stock gold paper. I think this is what they sell at, um recollections at Michael's. I just wanted to see if I could foil on it. Uh, I'll be honest with you guys. I don't plan on buying this. I know that it's budget friendly. Uh, it's just, I, I don't think that it's for my budget. I bought the Sizzix paper, which is a little bit more, but so worth it. So let's foil some things here. I have, uh, oh, oh, before we start foiling, hold on, sidetracked. I printed on some other things that I didn't get to cut. This is the bronze Sizzix, or sorry, rose gold Sizzix paper. So we're going to foil that. We're going to foil the acetate. We're going to foil the new designs from Kitchen Sink Stamps. I also bought some sticker paper. I want to show you guys what happened here. Okay, so the first one I want to show you is silhouette iridescent sticker sheets first of all don't waste the 10 bucks on the eight sheets like i did i am kicking myself right now michael's give me my money back um this is how it comes out and again it is designed for the silhouette machine oh come on let me get it out so look at this the corners don't have iridescent sticker on them because it's supposed to be designed for you to run through your inkjet printer and print the um, registration lines. So you don't even get a full sheet of iridescent paper. There's only eight in here. Um, they all have the corners cut out. I was able to print on my laser printer. Um, I have not foiled these because the toner... I did foil one of them um, and it foiled okay but the toner is like coming off of there so although you can foil on these I don't recommend foiling on these I just wasn't impressed with it so I would say don't waste your money on this it's ten dollars for eight sheets uh, and the corners are missing uh, uh, not a good value do you think Michaels will take it back if I give him seven sheets Bevy's like, rip off. Elizabeth's like, what? That's kind of rude. <laughs> yeah. Michael's, I want my money back. All right. So this is why I do these things for you guys. Okay. So then the other one I tried was clear sticker sheets. Now, here's the funny thing. Silhouette printable clear sticker paper. You do get a full sheet. Um, and I did print it on my laser printer. However, it does not like foil at all. That was a foiling fail. It did not stick. You can see it's a sticker. It looks cool. I'm going to try to turn the heat up a little bit and see if maybe I go to a higher heat. Maybe it'll take it a little better because it looks like it printed nice and dark for me, but these are a little thicker. So I'm gonna turn the heat up and see if maybe we gotta we gotta do that. And we'll we'll try to foil those. 
And finally, last but not least, is the Cricut. See my big note on there? No laser printer. This is the Cricut printable vinyl. Okay. Uh, it started to melt in my laser printer. There it is. There's the proof. I could have destroyed my laser printer. So we are not going to try to foil this. This is literally going to go in the trash can. Um, so I'm going to tell you guys, unless you plan on just using this for labels, you can print in your inkjet printer and color print and make some, some cheapy vinyl stickers. I would not buy this. Cricut 10 sheets of printable vinyl, unless you have another use for it, not for the foiling side of things. So see, when you guys want to know what I do, this, this is what I do. I buy things I probably shouldn't be buying. Okay. Yeah, Nancy has the silhouette, the baby joy, and of course, scan and cut. All right, let's get to foiling. So I asked my assistant to bring down the acetone so I could clean my dirty folders. Don't judge me. Don't judge me on the dirty folders, you guys. And we are basically going to play with both of the foils and see how things look. I'm trying to keep on top of the comments. I don't see anybody asking any questions that are too hard here. If you like what you're seeing so far, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. And for those of you that text me about the video last week where somebody decided they wanted to talk about me again, I want to thank her for sending viewers my way. But yes, I do endorse... Crafty Krita and other foil companies because it's a better value than deco foil. I like deco foil. I never said I don't like deco foil. I just said that there are other companies out there that are a better value. And yes, I do believe the mink is superior over the laminator. But you do what you need to do, girl. I know you got to sell your own foil brand. All right. Nancy doesn't need to sell anything. Nancy just tells the truth. Um, what did I do with all those pieces of foil? They're so clear, I can't see them. Hello. Hello, clear foil. Ha ha. All right, one of the tricks that I told you guys. Oh, who sent money? Thanks, you guys. I didn't have to do that. Thank you. Got a little dingy ding. Um, okay. I'm going to move some stuff out of the way here. I need a bigger desk. <laughs> Good night, Suzette. Okay, so these are the pieces of Crafty Critter Foil. And as I told you guys before, these get multiple uses out of them. Um, however, Nancy didn't take her own advice and write down what was the front and what was the back. So we're going to learn by trial and error here. <laughs> so with the Crafty Crita foil, it's not like a real foil. It's like, um, it's like an iridescent transfer sheet. So what it does is it transfers that iridescence. You can use this three, four, five times before it doesn't foil anymore. So... Let me grab that little scrap piece of gold and let's see if it works. Oh, forget it. Let me just grab one of these. This is the Hamilco. And what I tried to tell you guys when you're not foiling at 3 o'clock in the morning is try to figure out what's the top and what's the bottom by writing the letter B on it because you'll know if B is backwards. And of course, you should dusty dusty. I'm being lazy. Hello, star. Yep, you gotta label that clear foil, Elizabeth. Um, star, I answered that question you had yesterday on Tracy's live. Um, it's it's the old Creative Vision stamps foil, but it only comes in like four and a half inch rolls. So I don't 
how can I say this? I endorse everything Technique Junkies, but I think you can find a better value on the foil. That's the nicest way I'm going to put it. All right, so if I did this correctly, it should stick. Oh, I got lucky. I got lucky. So this is the top. So I put a letter B on there. Now watch this. Wah! Of course, this is Hamilco. Hamilco to the rescue. Look at that. So now you guys have seen me foil this once. I'm going to grab another. Same thing. Same piece of foil. You just watched me write the letter B on it. I know the B is in the right direction. You cannot do this with any other foil out on the market except for Crafty Critta. Here we go. New piece of Hamilco. Same piece of foil. Only with the Crafty Critta clear foil. Why does it do that? It's magic. I don't know. <laughs> Vivian said magic. Uh, Leanne, I do believe Crafty Critta has some new foiling papers they're testing out. I don't know if Crafty Critter is still here, if they can answer that, if they have that paper. I know they were working on selling some paper like Hamilco that you could print at home. Okay, so here it is. Again, the letter B, and I do letter B because you, you can see when you write letter B backwards that it's backwards, right? You guys already saw me foil once. Actually, that was the second time because I've already foiled with this piece once. You watched me foil with it twice, which is the second. So this is actually the third time this piece of foil is getting used. The third time. Oh, my gosh. My thing fell off the wall and scared me. The third time it's being used. Hello. I am using a mini mink, and it is on setting four because this... Paper is a little thicker. Okay. Now you guys are asking about inking it. So, yes, I took this ink pad and I've colored this Hamilco paper with an ink dauber. Do we think we can get another print out of this? Let's try it. I still see... Can you still see? There's still stuff in there let's keep going let's see if we can get this this will make this will make the fourth right one two three this will make the fourth print off the same piece of foil and we're going to try it on colored cardstock that's what i'm trying to tell you guys the value the bang for your buck you cannot beat crafty critter they are amazing i love those people Definitely going to go to Australia and hang out with them someday. Someday. I need, we need a Nancy Australia fund. Go fund me account. Uh-oh. Guess what happened? My mink said, I'm done working for the day. It's too hot. Leave me alone. I guess I've been having having it run for quite a while here. Don't fret, children. Nancy has a backup mink. Of course she does. Ta-da! Meet mink number two. <laughs> All right, I just turned it back on so I could finish unrolling the other one out. All right, but we're going to shut that shut that one off. We're going to let that one cool down. It's a safety feature of the machine. So let's turn this one on. So this is the baby mink. You turn it on back here. Then you press the button. And I was using four. This is the original Anna Griffin one, and I just used my Arteza 
vinyl and covered it and made it pretty. And then this is the one you guys, if you can find it, will look like if it's the mini. Of course, I have Big Mama Mink. If you are in the U.S. and you are looking, the best place I have found so far is Blick has them in stock about every three weeks. But they are hard to get all over the world right now. There's this group called Foiling Snobs Club, which keeps buying them. I don't know why. <laughs> okay, so Crafty Critta has print at home paper. It will be available starting tomorrow. 50 sheets for $8.95? Are you serious? I pay way more money than that for my Hamilco, and I only get 25 sheets on my Hamilco. That is a great deal, Scott. <laughs> Lisa says, come to Canada first is cheaper. Yes, Lisa, I will drive to Canada. <laughs> Jody, Jerry says, we're locusts. You guys are locusts. <laughs> Okay, so this was number four before Minnie Mink decided to go on strike. So we've used the same piece of foil four times, right? And this one I ink blended. Um, hello, do you see that? Fourth time using the same piece of foil. And my cardstock is colored. So I did one off camera. Two, three, four. Same piece of foil. I don't know, Pam. It's something, it's not like foil. It's some kind of a, it's a, some kind of like a polymer transfer. I could probably keep going. Let's keep going. All right, so this is... Clear sticker paper. I don't know if this is going to work. Oh, this mink smells funny. It's like burning plastic in there. I think this is my possessed mink. This one doesn't like me very much. All right, so here we go again. This is on clear sticker paper, the silhouette sticko, sticker paper that it doesn't like regular foil. We'll try it on Crafty Critter. Um, the hot foil, I know you guys like the hot foil. Uh, this is from Blue Bonnet. The only way you can order this is on her Facebook page. You have to, uh, I gotta mark this. You have to uh, message her and tell her which foils you're interested in. I do like her hot foils. For those of you guys that are using the Glimmer, Nancy will be having lots more Glimmer videos coming up soon. Spellbinders is selling, sending me, not selling me, sell, sending and selling me lots of products. So um, if you want to stock up on hot foil, Blue Bonnet ships all over as well, but you have to order through her Facebook page. She doesn't have a, um, a storefront. Um, and again, with the hot foil, it's a little bit more finicky. The Crafty Critter foil will stick to anything. The hot foil, you got to have, you got to be special. Um, I'm trying to grab one of these clear sheets here. And I marked it with a B. Now the hot foil, it's once and done. You cannot use this multiple times. It's once, it's done. I'm going to warn you now, it's going to stick to everything. So your toner, your, your folders, if you're using folders, they're going to get foil stuck all over them. So that's the clear sticker sheet. And then, um, what else did I wanted to try? Oh, I wanted to try this fancy schmancy. I did clear foil that one. Clear Foil Rocks is the discount code for Crafty Critta. It's 20% off of all foil and foil art at Crafty Critta for the next week.
Don't get the yellow one for Blue Bonnet. Yeah, yellow's tough because it's uh, it's, it's kind of translucent, so it defeats the purpose of foil. All right, so this is hot foil on clear sticker paper. This is the Silhouette sticker paper, so that worked okay. That's kind of cool. But again, ah, the hot foil is staticky and sticking to everything. The hot foil has to have a glossy surface to stick to or it doesn't stick well. So this is a cool, clear sticker now. If I can pull the backing off. Or not. Moving on. <laughs> this is using that waste of money iridescent sticker paper. See how my sheet got all foiled on? That's what you got. You just clear that, clean that with some acetone. That foiled okay. That's cool. It's a waste of money though, so I wouldn't I wouldn't endorse buying that. Okay, this is like using the same piece of foil, what, five times? This is five times now, right? This is using it on the clear sticker paper. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> that's, I'm so amused by this. I don't know why. Fancy. That's the clear sticker paper. Let's use some of those. Um, I, got, I got a lot of logos to send you guys now. <laughs> I wanted to show you these, and I hope I didn't scratch them up now. But I hope I'm answering questions on clear foil. Oh, here's that little piece of gold. So I originally showed in the video that you can foil certain types of foil card. So we're going to try this piece of foil card. Not all foil cards work. So you're, you're going to have to just cut a little corner and try it. And now that you know that you can reuse these Crafty Critter Sheets over and over and over again, you should be able to test several of your own um, card stock. I know a lot of you guys bought a lot of the uh, colored card stock off of HSN and Sizzix. Um, so go try it out. And I am just using the mink on, on the hot foils and the toner foils. So generally hot foils are made for the glimmer machine or the spell uh, the foil press machine, but I'm running it through. And whenever you have excess leftover foil, I always say just run it through the mink. It's just easier to do that way, you guys. All right, let's see if it sticks to this foil card. Pug, look at that. That is so cool, but bam Isn't that neat? <laughs> All right, so depending on what foil card you have, you could foil full sheet, use it as the background, die cut out whatever you want out of here, use it as a mat, whatever you want to do. I want to show these new designs from uh, Kitchen Sink Stamps, and I want to use some of those fancy foils from Crafty Critta. So if you want to see some of those foils that Nancy's like, you gotta try this. I'm gonna cut this down to five and a quarter.
Desiree, I am not uh, foiling in a heat press. The only time I use my heat press is when I'm actually like making t-shirts. Uh, you certainly can try that on your own, but I just have spent so much time invested in my mink machine that that's what I'm going to use, but you are certainly more than welcome to try with your heat press. I know that some people have tried that, but I just don't think you're going to get even results. So I'm always going to recommend a mink machine. Now, if you're just starting out, you may want to just try with a $20 laminator. I have recommended a few laminators. Again, not all laminators are the same. You do not need to buy, I will say that again, please do not buy the $70 Sovereign Laminator. Um, again, remember a lot of your YouTubers that you are watching that tell you to buy the $70 Sovereign Laminator get paid an affiliate link, a commission. So if you're spending $70 on a laminator or $20 on a laminator, which one do you think that they prefer to get commission on? And I'm not saying that's everybody. I'm just saying one of the things that I do is kind of try to debunk some of that. Where the red is right now but what i i don't like when people are endorsing a brand just so they can get their commission on it so i show you stuff because this is stuff that i actually use in my everyday crafting i try to film and show you guys videos it doesn't always happen but for those of you who've been with me for a while you'll get cards and things that i've made and you'll see this, this is stuff that I actually use in real life, you guys. These are companies that I believe in that, again, give amazing customer service, that have great products, that are not just trying to make a quick dollar on you. There have been products that I think we all have purchased. I did a video last year of the 10 things I wish I hadn't bought. Um, one of the things I did not buy that you guys, actually someone just sent me one, was the um, scrapbook.com magic mat. Definitely not one of the things I would have purchased. I'm glad I didn't purchase it. It does not work for me. So just be, be very careful. I tried to show products that I have used that I would put my money into and try again, just like those silhouette sheets. Will not be purchasing those again. I'm going to cut these down so they are a little bit easier to see and a better size. Okay. Now, I might be too hot with four. We'll try. All right, this is one of the new designs from Kitchen Sink Stamps. Again, dusty, dusty, kids. Dusty, dusty. Okay, we want to dusty, dusty that. We want to dusty, dusty the back of our foil. I am using this amazing, I got to buy some more of this, um, bronze glitter. Oh, so beautiful. This is right now my favorite, my favorite color. And you guys know how much I love the pink, but there's just something about this foil that's just magnificent. Okay, feed that in. I might be too hot. I'm concerned I might be too hot. We'll wait and see how that turns out. Let's try that same We'll do a different design. Um, exactly, Ken. These are mink folders, so uh, you can buy the big ones and cut them down. Scrapbook.com usually has the best price on them. It's like uh, 
four or five dollars for a two pack on scrapbook.com but um, if you can't find the mini ones I know like I said everything's kind of sold out in a lot of places right now you can get the bigger ones um, and cut them down wait do I have another roll in this why is my foil not open Always let your foil cool before you reveal it. Kim, Mother's Day is Sunday, and I think you should treat yourself. You won't resent, you won't regret it, I promise. You're gonna love it, and you're gonna use it. Because you know we have Memorial Day coming up, we have Fourth of July coming up. We have um, Christmas coming up, and you 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 know red and green, those are your staple colors for foils. Um, okay, I forgot to dusty dusty. Dusty dusty is very important, kids. What this does is it takes the little particles out of there. I can see there's a mist print there. I think I scratched my thing. How do you know which side to foil on on clear acetate? It's the side with the bump. So the smooth side stays smooth. Ooh, I can feel a bump in there. There's a dust spot right there. And the side with the ink, you can feel it's a little bumpier. There's definitely something in there. That's the side you put the foil on, okay? Pretty side up and the ugly side sticks to that. I didn't order anything from HSN other than those opulescent papers. That's what they're called. Sizzix opulescence papers because, honestly, HSN has changed their customer service. They don't do the $5 shipping all day crafting anymore. They have a full-size mink on there for $50 more than it should be. Shame on you, HSN. Shame on you. Ken, did you get the little prize package? Ken's in Miami, Florida. I want to be in Miami, Florida, too. <laughs> yeah, like they don't have any money, right? They're just trying to spend everybody's Biden bucks and take advantage. Um, S Harden, there's really nothing you can do to loosen the static. I don't recommend using, in fact, do not, do not use an anti-static tool. All you can try to do is just handle it carefully and, uh, it will eventually work itself out, but I do not recommend spraying anything on it. Do not recommend using an anti-static tool. Uh, you may be able to carefully wipe it with a dry Swiffer. That might work because the Swiffer doesn't have anything in it and it's designed to pick up dust. So you could try that. Dry Swiffer cloth. When these embossing, or not embossing, when these transfer folders get toner and foil stuck all over them. So I'll show you an example. Here's one. All you do is take a little acetone, 100% acetone, not fingernail polish with moisturizers, not fingernail polish with vitamin E, not fingernail polish with anything added into it. It has to be 100% acetone, the same kind you use to soak your fake nails off. You use that on a cotton ball and rub and it will take all the toner off. It'll take all of this uh, foil that's stuck on, all of this. I mean, they're designed to be used, so this is okay. The only time I don't recommend saving your folders, I mean, even this one, it's all stuck together, is if your mink eats them, which does happen. It did happen to me the other night. I wonder if I still have that one in here. Um, throw it away. It's not worth trying to resurrect it. Just throw it away. Once it's wrinkled, it's compromised, and it will continue to get stuck and eat. The machine will continue to eat it. it happens to all of us. There's nothing you can do about it. Just 
buy a whole bunch of folders. They're inexpensive. You can reuse them. You can cut them down. You can clean them up. Um, so I don't recommend using them once they've gotten eaten by the machine, which does happen. I'm trying to demonstrate each of these foils for you guys. I know I'm kind of going into the long-winded way of doing things here. And sometimes I use, um, um, Miss, Miss Kiki sent me these scissors to use as my dedicated foiling scissors, but sometimes I use a little rotary tool. Sometimes I use a trimmer. Again, use what you have. I'm not going to invest money into that Spellbinders cutting doodad because I have scissors and other things I can use. Dusty, dusty. Look at that green. Isn't that green amazing? I know Elizabeth loves the green. And did I demonstrate every single one? Nope, I didn't do this one. Oh, Kim says it's only 6.38 here. This one's called Baked Sand. Well, and it's Friday night. Tomorrow morning, there's an electronic recycling event in my neighborhood so when you have the stickers on there you guys don't fret cut that off and use this as your little kind of like make your um swatch cards out of it you know like people are like oh there's stickers on there every single foil manufacturer puts that stupid sticker on there. there's nothing we can do about it okay it tells you what it is holds the foil in place always store your foil where it can't get dusty, dirty, scratched. You want to keep it in the original bags with the names on there. You want to separate your hot foil from your toner foils. Um, but I use these sheets. It doesn't bother me when the sticker's on there. I just use it to make my swatches. You know, just make the best of it. And I wanted to give you guys a little bit of friendly, off-topic Nancy advice here. Um, some of you may or may not know that I have been in the car business. This is actually my 21st year. This month, the end of this month, will be 21 years since I've been in the car business. And I have worked my way up from salesperson to finance manager to sales manager to um, basically running the sales department, okay? You name it, I've done it. I've cleaned cars to, to, to make sure they're done right, you know. I, I've done everything but fix cars, appraise cars. So the car business is a very, very difficult business. Um, there are long hours involved. Uh, despite what the rumors are all over the internet and what your grandpa told you and what your neighbor's best friend told you, okay, there are many different scenarios to buying and selling cars. I've seen them all. And although, yes, there are some pointers you can find on the internet on how to buy and sell a car and what you should or shouldn't buy, I'm always going to tell you to go with your gut. Go with not your emotions, but go with your gut. Do your research, do your homework, check with a reliable mechanic on a vehicle. But I'm gonna tell all of you right now, this is a very difficult time of year because the supply is very low. The computer chip problem is affecting all of the manufacturers across the board. In case you didn't know, there is a computer chip because our cars now are 90% computers that is in short supply. And so a lot of manufacturers are not able to manufacture cars right now. On the flip side of that, the demand is very high, okay? So getting cars is very hard for car dealers right now. Uh, bargaining and, and, and getting them to negotiate their best deal right now, you're not going to get it, okay? Their supply is low, the demand is high, so if you are in the market for getting a newer pre-owned vehicle right now, you are going to get the best money you are ever going to get for your trade-in. I will tell you that. If you have a trade-in that you want to get rid of, 
they will give you all of the money because they need used cars right now. Um, however, if you are looking to get the best price in negotiating on a new car, I would say get in there. You may have to be forced with the reality of ordering a car, um, but don't expect to get uh, rock bottom, super low prices. So if you can wait, I hate to say this, but it might be better for you to wait if you're looking for the best price. But if you are looking to get out of a trade that you're unhappy with, that you think that you can, you know, do better, now is the time to get out of it. So, um, and then as far as aftermarket products, I mean, that's the business I'm in now. Um, I do believe in extended service contracts because I live on a budget. If my car breaks down, I cannot afford $1,500 to get it fixed. And like I just said, computers run our cars right now. So for the extra $30, $40 a month, I absolutely 100% endorse a service contract because I would rather pay $100 deductible and get my car fixed than worry about coming up with $1,500 on top of a car payment on top of car insurance. Now, if you're somebody who's very good with your budget and you have extra money laying around and you want to take your chances, go right ahead. But for the majority of us that are financing cars on a budget, I do believe in an extended service contract. I always ask uh, for a manufacturer's extended service contract, not an aftermarket one, because I want to know that I'm covered by the manufacturer. So just keep that in mind. I just want to give you guys my little tidbit of life there. All right, here we go. What, Kim? What was it? You mean 50, over, not $150,000. What kind of vehicle was it? A motor camper? <laughs> All right. Here is the, um, these are the ones that I said are the must-haves. Besides the clear foils, again, Crafty Crita is giving us 20% off. The code is clear foil rocks. 20% off all foil and foil art for seven days. This one's called Sparkle Bronze. Are you ready to see it? A Tesla's not that much. Oh, a 2020 Audi Spider. Wow, girl. Okay, here we go. Ooh, this is the one I printed on photo paper. This is that brand new design from Kitchen Sink Stamps. Now, again, Kitchen Sink Stamps has these downloadable files. There are three brand new files on there. They each come with four designs, so it's 12 designs, and you can print them out as many times as you want, foil them any color you want. That is cool, and this is on photo paper, so if you have photo paper because it's super glossy, it just prints beautifully. I thought I had some sample cards to show you, but I gave them all away. So you guys will just have to go back and... I posted pictures of them last week. But look at that glitter! Pretty. Okay, ready? This one is the Red Lava Flow. And this is on acetate. Oh, that's cool. And you want to save these pieces because, again, you can get toner sheets from Crafty Krita, and you can refoil this on the toner sheet so it never goes to waste. So here's one I did. This was a waste piece that I did on their toner sheets. Never goes to waste. Oh, I have those other. There's some other. Here's two more from Kitchen Sink Stamps. But look at this on the clear acetate. Ooh, pretty. That's the paisley with the red lava. Lava flow. That is cool. Okay. This one is baked sand. And this one's like a golden orange. my paper go that's pretty that design is the same as this design it's just two different colors one's on acetate one's on paper cool 
Okay, the green is probably one of the most popular ones. This one's called Rainforest. And then the blue is called blue, sorry, poolside blue. Oh, that is so cool. Poolside blue. Look at that. So the designs you can download. If you don't have a laser printer, Crafty Critter sells a whole ton of foil art. This is part of their, their new Slimline collection. And this is actually, this is a leftover piece that I did on toner sheet. So they have a whole ton. I did do a live with those a few weeks back. So you'll want to go check that out. But you get 20% off using the code Clear foil rocks for seven days. We got some more goodies here I can show you guys. So these are some of their slimline designs that I showed. So here was the original one I foiled. And then I took the waste foil and did it over one of their tone sheets. Look at that. So that same piece of foil got used twice. Isn't that cool? So you don't have any waste. Here's another one of their slimline designs. Look at this pretty one with the butterflies. This is like a, it's another one that I used twice with the distress brick. First time I foiled it and then using it on a toner sheet. Think of masculine cards. You can make this into a card and leave it as the background. You can die cut letters out of this. Super cool. I love all of these. And now these are all ready to go. I have them in my, all I got to do is make a card out of them pile. And remember, they do ship worldwide. They ship from Australia. It's a little bit cheaper once it goes from Australian dollars to U.S. dollars. If you are also looking for storage solutions they have some really cool storage solutions i have um an ink pad a three drawer ink pad holder on my desk which you can store your foils in or you can store your inks in so just to show you guys an example here these are really long drawers i'm going to take my inks out you can see that it holds a lot of inks i have my versifying claire my catherine puller full size and mini inks in here um, the, my most grabbed inks are right on my desktop and they fit in these drawers. They're very easy to put together. Just use glue. And here you can see the Catherine Pooler inks stack up three in there. You can go sideways with them and put six in there and then just keep going. Or if you're looking for foil storage, it's a really good way to protect your foils. You can see them, you can have the labels up, not have to worry about them scratching. You can stack them up. Let me see how many I can get in here. I think four, eight in a drawer. I would say safely without overcrowding them and without smashing them down. So it's a really nice size, three drawers on that one. Behind me, I have an ink uh, what I have uh, my pens in, my markers in for ink store or marker storage behind me. I have one of their large 12 by 12 paper storage. Everything that they have sent to me, you guys, I would have definitely purchased with my own money because the quality is good. It's easy to put together. When they come shipped, they are shipped economically where they're packaged well. There's not too much um, fluff packaging in there. There's no damage to them. Uh, they do a really good job in terms of, again, just taking care of as, as a customer. And it's really simple. I just use some wood glue and glue it together. And you can decorate them for those of you guys who like mixed media. You can put your foil on the outside. You can put colored paper. You can paint it. You can gel press it. Here's some other designs that I cut down.
And again, I wouldn't, I wouldn't keep showing you guys these things if they weren't cool products. And they, I mean, they're right here at my fingertips because I'm always using them. Here's another example of that clear foil that I've used on several different colors of cardstock. And those of you guys who have purchased this already, feel free to jump in. I mean, it's, you guys have purchased it. You guys will tell the truth. Here's that brittle hologram that I just did on silver cardstock. Here's the um, hologram hexagons that I did on blue cardstock. It's foiled cardstock already. I just put the clear foil on top of it. And so now I can die cut this. I can um, use it to mat a photo. If I wanted to mat a card, I can mat the card on there and I'll just have the foil in the background. I can die cut letters out of it. I can die cut shapes, whatever I want to do with it. So I have all of these all ready to go. So when I need to make quick cards, like I send you guys thank you cards when you donate. I send you guys birthday cards. I can just cut out a quick sentiment. Thank you. Happy birthday. Slap it on there. Put this on a card base. And I have an instant card. So it's fun to foil a whole bunch of these. And then when you need to throw something together, they're right there at your fingertips. All right. So I'm going to shut up now. <laughs> I'm going to answer any questions you might have. Do you guys want me to ink these real quick to show you? Oh yeah, Ken, oh, um, Stacy and I did a video where they have, I don't have them in front of me. Yes, I do. They have these um, foil art sentiments, Ken, and there are SVGs that you can uh, cut these out with your silhouette, your, um, or sorry, your brother scan and cut, um, where you layer it. Oh, the scan and cut scans this in. You put the SVG and it cuts it out. And it was so easy. I couldn't believe how easy it was. Like I was avoiding it. And Stacy's like, it's so easy. And so Stacy and I did do a video showing that. And they have hello, happy birthday, hugs, thank you. They have so many different ones that you can cut it out, foil it, SVG. Or if you don't want to foil it, you can leave it black. They're great. They're high quality. They use that same ultra smooth paper. So if you want to ink blend over it, you can ink blend over it. Um, so yeah, definitely check out their website. And you guys, the foil and the foil art is 20% off. So don't feel like you're limited. They, they have all of this foiling goodness and not everybody has a laser printer or wants to go through all of that. So this just makes it easy. Um, I want to stamp out something a little bigger. That's going to be easier for you guys to see the colors. Bye, Candice. Um, scanning cuts are not cheap. I will say that I was very lucky to have one of um, my viewers send me a scan and cut. And it is by far the best tool ever. I was very, very hesitant about getting one because I felt like, I have a silhouette. I have a baby cricket. I don't need a scan and cut. What do I have? What's so special about the scan and cut that would warrant me spending $300, $250, $300 on the machine? Um, so I was like, no, totally against it. Not going to do it. I don't need to spend that kind of money. But after having it, I would spend $400 on one. I definitely would. But I would say check your... Facebook Marketplace and Amazon. Um, Stacy, who is our scan and cut expert, check her channel out. Stacy got hers on Amazon as a refurbished one. And so she's constantly keeping her eyes open and telling us that they're out there. It also depends on what you're going to do with it. I'm very simple. I just scan my stamped images and cut them out. Stacy does quilting and she makes purses and things like that. So for her, um, she got the next level up, the bigger one. But I have the CM350, and you can find a lot of those on Facebook Marketplace or use, like, yard sales and things like that. For pretty reasonable, I think most people find them for around $200, which I think is a good deal.
I think that you, yeah, you don't have to buy dies. It works with anything you can scan in there. It works with pattern paper. Um, I have parked my silhouette and have not put it into use for over a year now since, since Melanie sent me the scan and cut. So, yeah. Oh, thanks, Regina. Yeah, eBay. Mini minks uh, are hard to get. Um, but yeah, I would say check Blick Art Store. Be careful when you find them on Walmart because Walmart has uh, European plugs, Australian plugs. So be careful. I would say the average price for mini mink is somewhere around $69, $70 right now. Big Mama mink, you're going to spend over $100 for. In Europe, I think you can only get Big Mama mink. I don't think you can get the smaller mink. Um, and Big Mama Mink just means that it's going to work on 12 by 12 paper. So if you want to do larger foiling, you can with the bigger mink. The smaller mink is designed for little, like, 6-inch panels that you can use for, like, card making. Oops. So these are the new inks just released by Catherine Puller. They will be available on May 12th. Um, they're part of her, they're called Beach Collection, right? So they are part of her spa collection. So they are a darker tone, darker undertone. But her inks are a high quality dye ink. Someone asked me if I would do a video comparing her inks to Stampin' Up! inks. Um, for those of you that don't know, Catherine Pooler was a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. She left Stampin' Up! and um, made her own business. These inks are pretty close to Stampin' Up! inks. There's more of a selection with Catherine Pooler inks. And the cases are easier to open with Catherine Pooler inks. There is no rule in crafting that says your loyalty has to be to one company unless you own that company. So what I mean by that is I have brand new Distress Oxide ink here, Salvaged Patina. I have Catherine Puller inks. I have VersaFine Claire inks. I have every single, almost every single Stampin' Up! ink. I just bought a whole bunch of reinkers for... Um, uh, Altenew. I have all of Simon Hurley's inks. So if you like the color, that's why you should buy the ink. If you like a certain style of ink, pigment versus dye, they both have their pros and cons. Then you should buy that ink. What you should not do is invest in inferior dollar inks because they will just break your heart invest in inks that are going to be of good quality that you know that you will use of colors that you will like you do not have to have full set syndrome and buy every single color of every single company that will just cost you a lot of money and give you a lot of heartbreak use the inks and the ink colors that you like that's the best advice i can give you so here is the new salvaged patina this is a Distress Oxide, which means it's a pigment ink. And this is the new Break Up Blue. Look, it is a blue kind of month by Simon Hurley. So the difference between dye inks and pigment inks is dye inks. So all of these guys are dye inks. Dye inks dye the paper. They soak into the paper. Pigment inks, like the Distress Oxide, this is a hybrid ink. Pigment inks are like a paint. They sit on top of the paper. So generally, pigment inks um, are very vibrant and bright because they sit on top of the paper. They layer nicely because they sit on top of the paper, but they do take a second longer to dry. Dye inks go in and dye the paper. So once they go in, they will even out. The blotchiness will go away. Um, but you can see these are six different ink companies, and I love all of them because all the colors are different. I don't feel like you should be put in a box and saying you only can buy these inks or you only can buy these inks. Buy the ones that you're going to use. Um, Bad refills are... Uh, 
So it depends on your pad, and I did a video on this too. So uh, let me grab a Stampin' Up! one. So the reason I gravitated towards Catherine Polar inks is because I always like the Stampin' Up! ink pads. However, Stampin' Up! ink pads, in my opinion, and I am a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, have gotten harder to open. So the way that you open these now is you put your thumb in here and you basically have to pry this open like a clamshell. And it's kind of tough to do, especially when they're brand new. Now, as you use the ink pad more, it will loosen up. But in the beginning, it is kind of tough to do. Once you open it up, then you slide it into place, okay? Well, it's a very small edge here, so when you try to close this back up, you're inevitably going to get ink on the side of your ink pad or ink on your fingers, ink on your thumb, wherever you're going to be. However, these are a nice spongy ink pad. So what I mean by that is there's a lot of bounce and a lot of give to them because it's spongy. It puts out a lot of ink. And it's very even looking when you stamp. The Catherine Pooler inks are pretty much the same thing. However, because she has a removable lid system, you can move that out of the way. You can see that it's that ink pad stands up. See how much height clearance you have? Stampin' Up! ink, not a lot of clearance. You have a lot of ink pad space, but not a lot of clearance where the Catherine Puller ink pad gives you a lot more clearance on that ink pad. These ink pads, both of these are very juicy, so you just need a light tap. If you stick your ink pad in here, you're gonna get a lot of over inking on your stamp. You don't need to do that. The sponge ink pads do a very good job of keeping that ink on the top, and so a light tap will get you a lot of ink. If you try to over, do that, this is what you're going to get. You're going to get too much ink or too little ink. It's just a very light love tap on those inks. And so I like both of these. I do think the Catherine Pooler inks are, uh, have a wider, wider selection of color. She also has two different sizes. So I had invested in the minis because they're the same ink pad. See? But they're small and they're cute. But I didn't know if I was going to like these. So you can buy these in little four packs or little eight packs they come in. Um, and then she has them by collection so that they kind of match. So like, I think this one was eight in here. But so they match the co color coordinate, I should say, not match. Color coordinate by themes. So you can buy them a little bit at a time. Same thing with the, the Stampin' Up! inks. You can buy them, you know, a couple at a time. Um... So in terms of comparing the inks and the ink pads, they're very similar pros and cons to both of them. Now, I will say that I do recommend the handles from Blue Knight Rubber Stamps. This is a magnet that's in the handle. This is called the Universal Handle. So they have a regular standard handle, which is bigger. It's wider can see the difference here it's a little bit wider um but it's the same width and the reason it's or length the reason it's why it's the universal is thinner is so it will fit in the oval shape of here these little um metal pads they're on my amazon shop they're 12 for six bucks i think it's five dollars and 99 cents for 12 so you want to buy the handle from blue night rubber stamps this is like four or five bucks for the handle if you use oval ink pads, you want the universal. If you use traditional ink pads like Memento, Versamark, Versafine, then you want the regular handle. So you can see I have one of each. This helps because you guys have seen, we, we all drop our ink pads. This helps to hold on to that ink pad. So we take the lid off and I don't have to worry about it. It's super strong magnets in that handle. I don't have to worry about dropping it on my project when I'm inking my stamp up. So a dozen for $6 in my Amazon shop. The handles, you go to Blue Knight Rubber Stamps to get the handles. So every time I get a new ink pad, I put one of those little uh, metal plates. This isn't the magnet. The magnet's in the handle. They're metal plates. And so they're ready 
to go. I don't, I can't really do that with these because of the folding hinge. So these just kind of stay on the desk when I'm stamping with them. Now felt pads. So Simon Hurley ink pads. I mean, these are both Ranger. These are felt pads. Felt pads are a little more difficult for me personally. Um, you definitely want the handles on these because these pads are really tiny. So you, you definitely want the handle on there. Okay. But felt pads, they, they, ha they have a fiber on them because it's felt. And again, you have a very low profile ink pad here. So I find with felt pads, I kind of dig in a little more to get that ink. And so if you're going to be using felt pads, I always recommend using a stamp positioning tool like a Misty because a lot of times you have to go back in and re-ink that stamp with the felt pads because you don't get that complete coverage like you do the sponge pad. So that's my opinion. Um, I've also changed my opinion of re-inkers. I previously said don't buy re-inkers. I have ink pads where I've never needed re-inkers. However, I found that now that I've found certain brands of inks that I like better than others, um, I kind of look at re-inkers as my safety blanket. Um, and the reason for that is I don't want to come up with colors that I use all the time and find out I can't get re-inkers for them. So, for example, right now there are about a dozen colors of VersaFine Claire that there are no re-inkers for. Um, you just can't find them anywhere. And it kind of makes me panic a little bit because I use these inks a lot and they're starting to dry out and I can't find re-inkers for them. So, I've changed my stance on re-inkers now if you have an ink color that you like, you do not need to buy the reinker right away, but I would say make a note of swatches of what inks you have and what inks you um, bought reinkers for and which ones you need reinkers for. So, for example, all of my Simon Hurley inks, I immediately buy an ink, a reinker for them. Just because they are felt pads, um, for me, they do feel a little bit dry. Just because of the way that I stamp, I like to keep them juicy and I like to keep reinkers for those. On the uh, Catherine Pooler inks, I don't buy the reinkers right away. I buy them as they go on sale. So she just had a sale. It was 30% uh, off. I forget what it was. She had all her reinkers on sale because she changed her packaging. So if you can take advantage of the sale, but same thing as I noticed, and especially with these smaller guys, it's a smaller ink pad. So you're going to need to re-ink that more often. Uh, I, I go by the reinkers for that. Distress oxides, I'm 50-50. If it's a color I like, I'll buy a reinker on it. If it's a color I'm trying and I'm not sure, I won't buy the reinker until I get to the point where I realize, yes, this is an ink I'm going to use or I'm not going to use it. And again, some of us have full set syndrome where you have to have everything. I've learned that I like bright, vibrant kind of rainbow colors. I don't buy too many um, darks and neutral colors. So oftentimes I realize, okay, I probably have a blue. I mean, here we have six blues. They're all different. But if, I, if one of them dries out, I probably have something similar I could go to until I get a color on my list that I can buy the reinker for, if that makes sense. So look at your budget. Use what you have. Use your best judgment. Don't ever let anybody tell you what you should or you shouldn't buy. Just go but you know, based on how you use your products. If it's an ink pad you use all the time, probably want to reinker. If it's an ink pad you use once a year when you're making Christmas cards, you may not need a reinker. It's a personal preference. Scott said, you all have me working hard. The paper is now live on the website. Two sizes, eight and a half by 11 and a four. 50 sheets to a pack. That is cool. I cannot wait to get my hands on that and test that out for you guys. Don't forget, um, clear foil rocks, 20% off. Um, at Crafty Critter on their foil and their foil art for a week. So let's support the small crafting community. 
I do like these domed daubers if you guys haven't tried them yet. I won't use the flat ones anymore. I only use the domed ones. And you can get them from scrapbook.com. You can get them from Ranger. Everybody has them now. They're the same. Let me read some comments here. I know I've done a terrible job at that tonight. If I missed your question, please post it again. Talking about the CP inks. Cynthia, me too. I have more of the minis than I do the largers. I mean, don't get me wrong. Obviously, I like CP inks. I don't have all of them like Stacy and Tracy do. I just, you know, I add a few at a time in my collection. Um, obviously, Catherine Pooler is amazing. She's done Stamp Wars with us twice. She's done Stamp With Me. Um, she gives us sneak peeks of her products because she's so cool, but she's just an awesome person, right? So I love supporting companies like Catherine Pooler, like Lisa from Local King, like Crafty Critta. I know my friend Simon was on here. And I showed you guys Simon stuff. So these are companies that I like to support. And, you know, when you find a company that always does right by business, you just, you just want to stick with them, right? We want to keep them in business. CraftyCritta.com. Carol Green, the foiling fairy, is going to add some of that paper. Clear foil rocks. Thanks, Bunny. Bernie thinks that the Ranger foam is not as good as the scrapbook.com foam. That is, that is good to know, Bernie. Watch out for pirated stuff. Yes, absolutely would agree. So I do not buy from... AliExpress, I do not buy from, um, what's the name of that other store? I don't even buy from them. But So I buy direct from uh, the, the companies. So I buy from Crafty Critta or Reputable, like Scrapbook.com or Local King Rubber Stamps or Kitchen Sink Stamps. When you see knockoffs at a better price, it's an inferior quality. Usually it's a silicone stamp. You do not want to buy those. You're hurting the companies that you're ripping off because you think you're saving so much money. It's, again, these are small mom and pop companies. You know, there's a cost to them to outsource to manufacture the stamps and products they're making. So for, you know, where it's kind of like pirating their designs and stealing it. So let's not support those companies. Um... If you can help it, I know that sometimes stamps are not cheap. That You can buy them used, and guess what? They work just as fine. So check out eBay. Check out um, exchange groups on Facebook. There's de-stash groups on Facebook. Sometimes people get into stamping and foiling, and then they realize it's overwhelming. They don't have time for it, or they don't like it, and they sell all of their stuff cheap on eBay and Facebook, and that's what you guys need to find. Scott says, if you want to add it to your order already placed, e email info at craftycrita.com. That's the customer service I'm talking about. So 20% off at Crafty Crita on all foil and foil art um, for the next week using the code clearfoilrocks. Yeah, do not buy from wish.com ever. AliExpress and wish.com, you guys, it's not even worth wasting your time. Lisa just did a video showing her stamp set got ripped off. Ugh. Ugh. Yep. Yep. Any other questions? You guys, oh my gosh, I've been on here for two hours. Why didn't anybody tell me to shut up? <laughs> I know, Connie. I feel like I haven't seen you guys in a while. Hey, don't forget, next Saturday, what's happening next Saturday? Do we have a date night next Saturday? 
Goodbye, Diane. Catherine Puller stamps you can get directly from Catherine Puller or scrapbook.com. That's right. Stamp war, stamp war, stamp war. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 dun. I am the host. <laughs> In here are two stamp packages. Should I just open it and show you guys what it is? So we have uh, one package for me and one. <laughs> you guys are saying 12. Yes, yes, yes. One package for me and one for me to give away because how Stamp Wars works, if you are new and have have not been following, or you're new to my channel and haven't been following along. So Stamp Wars, this is Stamp Wars 12. We have had, this is our one dozen Stamp Wars here. Stamp Wars um, is, each stamp set is sent to Chow, Stacy, Tracy, and myself. And I will be the host, which means I will not be playing this week. Um, those three do not know, and we will not tell them who the manufacturer is or what the stamp set is. So they won't know until the night of Stamp Wars. It's 7 p.m. 7 p.m. Eastern right here on my channel. And... Um, <laughs> And uh, or 7 a.m. Sunday morning if you are in Australia. And uh, I will give them sabotages. And I have written down my Stamp Wars 12 sabotages on this little piece of paper here. So uh, they won't know what the sabotages are. They will have about an hour's worth of time to make whatever I tell them to make. Uh, and then you guys will get a chance to vote on who you think completed Stamp Wars 12 the best. And then I will do a video and each one of them will do a video without sabotages the during the following week. Um, so that if you decided you liked the stamp set or what we've made and you want to purchase it by supporting our sponsor, uh, you will have basically five videos to go back and watch uh, for us to do it. So you'll have the Stamp Wars video and each one of us, so the four of us, will have our demonstration video. So you will have five videos and I think this has been very helpful to a lot of you guys because a lot of you have stamp sets and you can only see that stamp set being used one way. I'm the same way. And so when you get to have five instructors basically show you how to use a stamp set, um... It makes it, it makes it a little bit more value to you because you can go back and watch these videos. It's free. This virtual YouTube library where you can go back and say, what did Tracy do? What did Stacy do? What did Chow do? I mean, Chow's videos are like five minute videos. Um, Tracy's are always cutesy and fun. Uh, Stacy and I hate coloring. So Stacy's always using technology to her advantage. She's always using the scan and cut or she's using embossing folders. And I kind of fall somewhere in the middle. Like you, you never know. So it's fun to have these five teachers walk you through different ways of using it. However, hi, Patty. Um, what we've done is kind of expanded that from Stamp Wars to Color With Me or Stamp With Me. And so if you were not aware, Stamp With Me is at the end of the month. You still have time to purchase. So this will be... May 15th at 7 p.m., right? Saturday, May 15th at 7 p.m. Eastern on my channel. But it's a surprise. You won't know what this stamp set is until that Saturday. Well, Stamp With Me is the opposite. So Stamp With Me tells you what the stamp set is. I don't like buying surprise kits because to me, if I don't like it, it's no value. It's like that iridescent paper. What a waste, right? So we show you ahead of time 
what is the stamp set and what are we going to be using? So Technique Junkies, Pat over there, has given us a discounted kit. We have a special link in our group for it. And this is going to be Stamp With Me, which will be May 30th, I believe, Saturday night, 7 p.m. Eastern, um, which is, uh, this stamp set is called Floral Frames, and it's a very large set, and you get two shimmering bliss sprays. You get Just Squeeze, which is a nice bright orange, and Thule and Pink, which is matches my nails. It's a purple-pink color. These have mica in them. They're lots of fun. You can buy the stamp set alone right now or you can get the kit which is the stamp set and the sprays and we have a discount code for Tracy because Tracy is on her design team and I believe it's TJ10 Tracy oh May 29th sorry Saturday May 29th so Chow just put the link if you wanted to order this um but the code, I believe, is TJ10Tracy, and you get 10% off if you guys want to purchase anything from Technique Junkies. That's Tracy's code. So you get 10% off um, for that. I'll pay shipping for the iridescent paper if you give it away. <laughs> um, yeah, TJ10Tracy is a 10% off for Technique Junkies. So you still have plenty of time if you order now, even those of you that are in Europe. Um, Pat is very good about shipping very quickly. She's prioritizing these so that you guys can get them in time. But Stamp With Me is, um, it's all of us just hanging out just like we are right now. And we'll all be on Zoom and Pat will join us on Zoom and she will give us ideas on how to use the stamp set, how to use the sprays, no sabotages. It's just a fun get together and you guys are live with us so you can get out the stamp set and color along and stamp along with us. So if you are interested in, in doing that with us, use the link Chow has provided in the chat and you get the set. It's normally, it would be $20 for a stamp set, $19.95, and then like five or $6 for each of these sprays. But she's basically throwing in one of the sprays for free. So I think it's $24.95 for the set. And then using Tracy's link, you get another 10% off. So for those of you that are in Europe and they have a threshold of extra shipping, by using that 10% off, you pay less. Uh, than you would have if you bought them in individually. Um, or if you already have the Shimmering Bliss sprays or you don't want to worry about them um, having a little accident during shipping. I know some people freak out about that. You can order just the stamp set. It's called Floral Frames Square SS120. Uh, just the stamp set. It is a red rubber clean stamp set. And it comes with this frame and these three different sentiments. Uh, and that's $19.95, and you can use Tracy's discount if you just want to order the stamp set. So would love to see you guys join us on Stamp With Me May 29th, and next Saturday is Stamp Wars. All right, did I miss anything? Any questions for me? Good night, Joan. Oh, you guys, I didn't get on that list. And can somebody get Lisa? I want to get on that list. Just kidding. I don't know if I'm going to have time, honestly. I have so much stuff going on right now. Aw, thanks, Jerry. Um, can I ask how Ryan is doing? Ken, yes, there is a code for kitchen sink stamps. It's on the Mod Squad page. I don't... I have a link, Ken. Uh, I'll have to get you the link uh, and the code. Chow, can you link Kitchen Sink Stamps and the code? Um, I'm going to be very honest with you guys, as I always am. Um, Ryan's situation has not changed. That's That's the best way that I can put it without divulging private information obviously this is a very difficult time for him and for us and um he appreciates everyone's support for him um but this is a very difficult time for him i have been in contact 
with his mother. Um, but I would just say that his situation is unchanged as of now. Uh, he is still trying to work out the best way to get the best treatment for himself. But as of last, I heard his situation is unchanged. That's the only way that I can put it. Um, so uh, I always try to let his mom know that you guys are asking about him. Of course, you guys can send cards of encouragement to Ryan. I know a lot of you guys have tried to email or text him. You may occasionally see a social media post out of him. Um, we have refrained from kind of reaching out to Ryan and invading his privacy because we know this is difficult for him and we don't know how he's going to respond um, so anybody that's ever been through this before, I know a lot of you guys have sent us encouraging, supportive gestures towards the FSC team and towards Ryan, which we certainly appreciate, but I would ask again, please do respect his privacy and our privacy. Um, you know, I'd rather not speak on it's not it's not our business and it's not our story to tell it's Ryan's story to tell and the path that Ryan goes down is the path that he has to choose so I can't answer for him I know that you know if you guys want to send cards that's great but I would not recommend messaging social media email any of those things uh, same with sending those messages to me or my team because we don't have an answer to give you guys and I would love to have an answer to give you, but the best way I could put it is, as I said, I think the best thing for me to say is the situation is unchanged at this point, and we are all praying for him and all, of course, hoping for the best for him. Um, and, and you know, just hoping that, the, that he does okay. So, yeah, we, we definitely miss him for sure. Yep. Yes, it is a it is a process. Yes. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Kim's <laughs> Kim's thinking of the bright side. Oh, someone else can win stamp wars. <laughs> um, Tina, um, as expected, you know, she's his mom, so you know, obviously very difficult for her as well. She is running her bakery and you know, she, she's doing the best that she can as a mom. But again, you know, Ryan is an adult. Ryan has to make his own decisions and he has to choose the path that he's going to go down. So um, she's doing what she needs to do and, and supporting her son as best as she can. Yep. Bernie says, Kim in Alaska, I was thinking it. <laughs> um, some good news. I have... Um, foiling video I'm going to do for Simon's products. So keep an eye out for that. Um, uh, also Spellbinders has asked me to join on with some stamps for them, but also I talked to them about doing some foiling with the glimmer machine. So they have agreed to let me do some of that. So I'm excited to do some more glimmer foiling with you guys. And, um, obviously Tracy has been a busy, busy person. She's she's on several design teams doing um, doing uh, design teams, Mod Squad Challenge. Stacy is the scan and cut queen of our group. So if you have scan and cut questions, those go to Miss Stacy. I do want to mention that Lee has helped. For those of you guys that have the newer scan and cut, is it the scan and cut DX? And you want the print and cut feature. The way it's explained to me is the print and cut feature is not a free feature on the machine. You have to buy a downloadable access card code thing. Uh, I don't know how much it is, but Lee is able, he has a connection in the UK where he can get them. And then he will send you the code. So you don't have to worry about mail or anything like that. And he has done that for, I think, 30 of our members. Uh, so if you are interested in the scan and cut print to cut feature, 
Stacy posted something about that in the group. I'm also going to assume that the card swap for this month will be closing soon. So if you are interested in doing the card swap, get your butt over to the sign-in sheet and get that handled. You must sign up fresh every month. Um, I don't remember what the theme is, but you can go check that out. And your cards must be done and in the mail by the 20th. What am I missing? Oh, Lee is not getting them anymore. Okay, sold out. All right, sorry. Oh, Stacy posted in the group. Okay, so Stacy posted in the group how to get it. I knew there was a post somewhere about that. Sorry. I knew I knew there was something going on about that. So it's, there's a post in the group about scan and cut, print to cut feature. But it's only on the new scan and cut. You can't get it on the one we have. We have the CM350. I don't really need that anyway, so it doesn't bother me. You can still get it, just in a different way. Okay, cool. Thanks, Stacy, babe. I'm surprised that you're still up. Didn't you, did you go to Dairy Queen and get your banana split no bananas today? Agree with you, Ken. Agree. Okay, so I have two questions I need you guys' help on. And then I promise I'll shut up. Because this is going way too long. Number one. I have got this bad eczema on my skin. Do you see it? Now Leah has eczema. Now I joke with her and say that she gave it to me. It just started in the last two months. I've been using Leah's eczema medicine, but it's slowly starting to spread down my hand onto my wrist. I thought it was poison. It comes and goes, but it's not going away. What do, you, do you think it's an allergic reaction to having too much Starbucks? Because I'm addicted to the mango dragon fruit, and I think that I'm allergic to the mango dragon fruit. It's just on, And there's a little spot here on my hands, but it's really like this. Do we have a dermatologist that can help me here? Because Leah's steroid cream is not killing this. And question number two. No, they're just little itchy bumps. Sometimes they blister. That's why I thought it was poison because there was little blisters. And then they itch and then all of a sudden they'll go away out of nowhere. Then they'll come back. Like, they weren't there at all this morning. And it tends to be worse in the evening than in the daytime. Benadryl, see if that helps. Me too. See, I think it's, I don't know, beach, sun, salt, and relaxation. I'll take it, Debbie. Not use anything. Shingles? That's what I said, Star. Maybe I need to stop drinking it and see if it's that. Stop the Starbucks. <laughs> I don't want to stop it. Michelle, I'll be over. <laughs> All right. Second question. Um, do we have anybody that has an attorney that I can talk to about the trademark? So the trademark was denied. We just found out because... We have to read it. It's in legal mumbo jumbo jargon, but it sounds like I cannot trademark Stamp Wars unless I can prove that it generates income. That's what it sounds like to me or that I need to have some kind of a mark, like an actual trademark. So obviously I'm going to have to submit this logo um, as our trademark. But if anybody knows of anybody that could possibly be an attorney that we can uh, forward the email to so they can help us a little bit. Uh, I get 18 million emails a day from attorneys that tell me to send them $300 and they'll fix it for me. But I'm hoping there are some good kind hearted people out there that like crafting that maybe I can exchange some foil for their help. But exactly, Kim. It generates income for the sponsors, sure. <laughs> yeah, I'm missing info for the trademark.
I'll be happy to share some foil. Yes. I know it probably takes a specific type of attorney. I'm sure that a trademark attorney is not like, you know, it's probably specialized. But I just thought I would ask. Yes, Kim, but we don't have an affiliate link for a lot of our uh, hosts. I mean, like I don't have a local King Rubber Stamps affiliate link. Uh, well, a lot of times we just do this for fun, just for you guys. I mean, yeah, I get free stamps out of it, but we do it for fun. You know, it's not like we charge, we don't charge a fee to them. We don't charge them. We don't force them to give us an affiliate link. We don't, we get free product out of it. So it doesn't really generate income. Like this, this, I will tell you this company here is a brand new company. You guys have never seen us use before. We don't have an affiliate link for them. So we're just getting free stamps out of it. Um, I honestly don't even think that they do discount codes. So, you know, it's just for fun. Yeah, but I don't want to charge. I don't want to do that. I don't want to charge you guys. Listen, YouTube is free. I go on here for my fun to hang out with you guys. I don't want to go to Patreon or charge you. I don't want to do that to you guys because it's not fair. I mean, if you guys want to donate, you guys know that you can donate. It's always appreciated, but never, ever required. I just want us all to have fun and hang out. And that's why I don't sell merchandise. I mean... If you guys wanted stickers, I was selling the stickers for three, four bucks each. But again, it's just so I could buy more stickers. <laughs> you know, it wasn't like I was trying to make money. I don't ever want to try to make money off of you guys. It's just for fun. I mean, yes. Do we use the money? We do. We use the money to, to buy more foil. We use the money to pay for postage to give away stuff. We use the money to buy $10 silhouette sheets that aren't worth $10. But, I mean, Nancy's not going on vacation. That'd be nice though. Well, I think that's what they want to show in order to protect the trademark. You can't just trademark something just to say, I want a trademark. You have to be a reason to protect the trademark. So I'm going to submit this logo and say, obviously, I want to protect this, but I really wanted to protect the term Stamp Wars is what I was trying to protect. But if I just need to protect the trademark Nancy Stamps FSC, I'm okay with that, but I really wanted to protect the, the term Stamp Wars. <laughs> right, Bernie? I'm going to be like, who wants foil? Who wants inks? Signed by Nancy Stamps. Hey, look at this. This is so cheesy that that one little corner. Oh, silhouette, you're so annoying. And it's not like it's like coming off. Wonder if it will come off with alcohol. Yeah, so that's what we went through the copyright patent office. And they basically just said, no, denied. You have. X amount of days to dispute it. And I was like, what? Uh, don't put alcohol on the iridescent sticker. It just rubbed all the iridescence off. That was not a good idea. Whoopsie. Uh, they say if you want to contact an attorney, uh, you can contact an attorney. Well, that's what I might have to do, Kim, yeah. And the problem is with COVID, there's nobody's working in offices right now. So we're dealing with people that are at home, you know, so it's just, I don't know. It's complicated, but I wanted to give you guys an update on that. We're still working on it. All right, you guys, that is my cue. I got to go. Go do your shopping over at craftycrita.com. Use the 20% off discount code. I will see all of you guys next Saturday for sure. Thank you for watching. Don't forget the thumbs up on the way out. For those of you catching this on the replay and you want to know what the heck I was talking about, post your comments down below. Love you all. Be safe and keep on foiling. Bye-bye.